name is Roger Gitong and I will be taking you through self-assessment and payment of tax by companies. Now I did a previous video on individuals and it is, I would recommend you to go through that because there's a lot of similarities uh, to it. But besides that, I really want us to really appreciate um, the fact that this is not a very common area um, for students to like. And therefore, I really hope that we can change that perception. A lot of people say, oh, this is just theory. But the reality is that it is, it is as practical as other chapters. So let's look at to, in, let's look into it let's dive into it now the first thing I want us to really appreciate here is that when it comes to self-assessment for companies we look at primarily two things one is returns and two is payments one is returns and two is payment now for returns the question is by when should i file our our returns as a company and if we do not file our returns on time what are the penalties? What are the consequences? Well, when we come to payments, we ask ourselves first and foremost, um, by when should I file or rather by when should I make my payments? When is the due date for my payment? And if I don't pay on time, what are the consequences? So those are the questions we ask ourselves in this area. Now, the notifications that companies have to make are a bit different from individuals. Individuals normally make notification of chargeability, while companies also do so. There's one thing that they first do that individuals don't, and that is the notification of their first accounting period. Now, they do need to do this within three months of the start of their first accounting period. They do need to bring to the attention of HMRC, their first accounting period. The second thing is that we appreciate that if they don't do this, they will incur a penalty of up to £300 plus £60 per day for information outstanding. And they could even incur up to an, a penalty of up to £3,000 for any fraudulent information that they give. So for the first one, um, the £300 plus £60 per day is is when you find you have not yet provided sufficient information required by HMRC. While for the £3,000 penalty, that is normally incurred if you have produced or provided fraudulent information. Now, the second notification that we have is of chargeability. This is just like um, for individuals, they did have a notification of chargeability. Theirs was, if you remember, six months after uh, the end of the tax year, which would normally be 5th of October, while for companies, it is usually within 12 months of the period end that it has taxable total profits. So don't confuse the two. Now, we did define what returns are in, in the self-assessment for individuals, but I want us to really appreciate um, this aspect of returns. First and foremost, unlike individuals who file both paper and online returns, for companies, they primarily file only online returns. Two, this must, and you've seen the importance of really knowing when the due date is for filing is because that is what we are meant to learn here. You know, in terms of returns, by when should I file my returns? And if I don't file them on this time, what are the consequences? So we want to first and foremost know, by when should I file my returns? So this must be submitted by the later of 12 months after the end of the period of account. So we have two things we look at here. First and foremost is 12 months after the end of the period of account or three months after issue of notice to file the return by HMRC. So whichever comes later, whether it's the three month period after the notice has been served or 12 months after the period end um, has, has elapsed, we will see which one comes later. Now, usually, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is always the case, but usually you'll appreciate the fact that number one uh, or the first one might be the one given in a question uh, format, but that doesn't mean that you can't get uh, both of them, okay? Now, the next thing I want us to consider under returns is that, interestingly enough, the tax computations. Now, you see, for individuals, they can actually request HMRC to help them 
in their tax returns or rather to help them in their tax computations but for companies they can't seek for such support and therefore they have to compute their taxes um, and accounts supporting the return must be submitted usually through a software known as the inline extensible business reporting language. Now the IXBRL is usually a standard for reporting business information in an electronic form which uses this tagging software that can usually be read by computer so that when you feed the data into the system um, the, the the tagging software is able to pick up the key um, information that will be uh, that will help to populate the amount the tax due and the likes now what happens if you file your returns late what's the penalty now if you file three months earlier than three months okay between zero to three months late and i want you not to confuse the penalties for individuals and the penalties for companies because they are different so if you file ideally here late as you remember for companies we had a fixed 100 pound um, as we do here but then we would now say if you exceed between three to six months will take 90 um, times six days so 90 times 10 i mean 10 pounds times 90 days so you really don't want to confuse the two okay and it would go on further from there now for them they say here they have a hundred pounds fixed penalty if between zero and three months now if this is the third time the company is consecutively filing late and maybe the third time they have filed um, two months late so they've been filing the first time they filed late maybe they filed five months late we, okay which we're not bothered with right now then they they filed again second the second time they filed late they filed maybe two, um, you know eight months late then the third time they are filing late which is this one they filed two months late this is the third consecutive late filing we won't charge them a hundred pounds we will instead charge them 500 pounds then we have here the second one if it's between three to six months late what would normally happen in such a case if it is between three to six months late we will charge you a fixed penalty of 200 pounds now if this is the third time you're consecutively filing late instead of charging you 200 pounds we'll charge you a thousand so again the example goes like this you filed let's say the first time you filed you filed late you filed maybe 10 months late okay then you filed again the second time you filed it late you filed maybe five five months late then the third time consecutively you have filed late again and it has hit five months again what will happen is that we won't charge you 200 pounds we'll charge you a thousand pounds then we come to the aspect of you filing six to twelve months late now if you file six to twelve months late you will be charged 200 pounds which is the fixed penalty or if it's the third time you're consecutively filing late we'll charge you a thousand pounds plus a further penalty of 10 percent of tax outstanding six months after filing date so the 10 percent of the tax outstanding will be added to the fixed penalty of 200 pounds if it's the first or second time you're filing late and but if it's your third time your fixed penalty will be a thousand pounds plus now an additional penalty of 10 percent now what if it is greater than 12 months if it is greater than 12 months late then we will charge you the fixed penalty of 200 pounds plus a further penalty now of 20 percent of the tax outstanding now as you can see here he's this guy's in dismay you know he's he's been filing his tax late so let's give a question so we have a a company here known as wildman uh, as you can already see even the name itself <laughs> already incites to you that there is trouble so wildman has a 31st of december year end it files its return for the year ended 31st of december 2023 on 18th of july 2025 now before we move on we want to ask ourselves by when should they have filed their return they should have filed their returns at least 12 months after this 
okay or three months after the notice was served whichever comes later um and that we learned previously so the thing is that because you don't have any notice mentioned in this question will only take 12 months after the year end which is 31st of december 2024 so they should have at least filed their returns by 31st of december 2024 as we can do the computation here these guys are late because if you count it, we have January, February, March, April, May, June, and, and, and you know, between June to July, there's almost like six to seven months late. So already, even if I was to go back here, six to seven months late, I'm seeing here, uh, I might have a 200 pound and a, plus a further, you know, a further penalty of 10%. That's what I'm looking at. If this is not, if you've been filing on time, if it's a third consecutive filing, instead of taking 200 pounds, we'll take a thousand. Now, I told you the tax due of 80,000 80, is paid on the same day. Remember, we're taking 10% of that. So 10% of 80,000 is 8,000. And remember, there's a fixed penalty of 200. So I can already see the figure could be 8,200. All previous returns have been filed on time. So at least we know um, this is not the la third consecutive late filing. Because instead of charging a fixed penalty of 200, we would have charged a penalty of um, 1,000. So what is the penalty due as a result of the late filing? Now, the return should have been filed on 31st of December 2024 and was filed more than three months late. So a fixed penalty of 200 pounds applies, as we've said. The return was filed on 18th of July, which is more than six months, but less than 12 months, right? Therefore, an additional penalty of 10% will be charged on the tax due. And that gave us 8,000 so that the maximum penalty is 8,200, right? Now, um, I don't know if you can recognize this. This person is stressed. You know, they should have kept records. So maybe we can advise the companies what would we tell them but how long should you keep your records and i don't want you to confuse this with individuals because individuals had a record um you know time for self-employed for five or five years following the 31st of january following the end of the tax year and for employed it was one year after 31st of january following the end of the tax year what about for companies for companies it is the later oh my of the six years of six years from the end of the relevant accounting period and to the completion of a compliance check that has been conducted into the return now i hope you remember the the timelines for compliance checks because they are similar to individuals and then three the date on which it becomes impossible for a compliance check to be open that means that the time for a compliance check to be conducted has already elapsed okay so the thing is that it is the later of these three dates six years from the end of the relevant accounting period the completion of a compliance check that has been conducted into the return or the date on which it becomes possible impossible for a compliance check to be opened now there's a high chance that number one would be the one we we'll consider most likely but it doesn't mean that um, in a question we can't give all the three together for you to determine which one comes later okay just like for individuals the penalty is a thousand three thousand pounds if you don't keep the appropriate number of records now the part i want us to be very keen on we're done with returns but i want us to be keen on a few things here because record keeping was like an, a commercial break okay remember i told you there are two aspects we look at in self-assessment one is returns and two is payments so for payments if you looked at my summary picture i gave two types of companies i gave large companies and non-large companies because that's if, if if you're a large company the time you should have paid by and if you're not if you're a non-large company the time you should have paid by so the question is how do we first and foremost determine if you're large or not so let's learn about something known as augmented profits now augmented profits are calculated by you taking your taxable total profits ttp is your taxable total profits now you should remember that your taxable total profits is an addition of all incomes that a company has made be it interest income from non-trading loan relationships trading income property business income um 
trade uh, which one am I missing miscellaneous income net chargeable gains so they add all these incomes together they get their total profits and then they could less their losses in their qualifying charitable donations to get their taxable total profit now this taxable total profit normally speaking we don't add dividends as any part of an income to get your taxable total profits dividends are usually excluded from the computation of taxable total profits but to get your augmented profits we normally add the dividends received from non-group companies so i want us to look at this question t -Cell Limited has TTP of 640 and receives dividends from a 15% subsidiary of 250,000. Maybe I should have mentioned something here, by the way. Um, Non-group companies are basically companies that you have less than 51% shareholding in. Okay, so any company that you have less than 51% shareholding in is a non-group company. All right. Now, you told here TZ Limited has TTP of 640. They receive dividends from a 15% subsidiary of 25,000 and dividends from a wholly owned, that's a 100% subsidiary of 9,000. What's the augmented profits? Now you can pause here. You can pause here and actually try and ponder and see. Let me look at the formula. Let me try to see the question. Take your time. Take your time. And when you do that, then from there, before I show the answer, Try to see whether you can get the same answer. So pause here, stop here, okay, and then do the question, all right? Fantastic. Let me continue myself. So what will happen is that I have TTP of 640,000, and I will add the dividends from the non-group company of 25,000 because I can see here the only company that I have, the, that Teasel, Teasel company Limited has less than 51% um, in is this 15% subsidiary. So that will be your augmented profits. Now, let's look at a few things to consider. Now we have something known as the profit threshold. The profit threshold is, let me first of all read this part. To determine the due date, augmented profits are usually compared to the profit threshold. Why? Augmented profits help us to determine what type of company this company is. Is it a large company or not a non-large company, okay? Now the profit threshold is usually 1.5 million, but for this is for a 12 month period. So what does that mean? Your threshold could reduce in two circumstances. One, if the thresh, since the threshold is time apportioned, if your accounting period is, let's say, four months, we will do four over 12 times 1.5 million, okay? So we're going to reduce the threshold. And the second thing that reduces the threshold is something known as the number of associated companies. So the profit threshold of 1.5 million is divided by the number of associated companies, including the company itself, at the end of the immediately preceding year. So this part at the end of the immediately preceding year, the previous year, is asking yourself which companies does your parent or the parent company you're of concern have? Um, how many subsidiaries does this parent company have, um, you know, from last year? going backwards so why we're looking at this is um we appreciate the fact that an associated company or an associated company for tax purposes not for financial reporting but for tax purposes a company is usually associated with another company if either if either co if, if with another company if one controls the other or if both are under the same control and control basically means more than 50 percent okay now, the due dates for payment are this. If you augmented, if you find your augmented profits, and we've just seen how to get augmented profits, if they're greater than the profit threshold, then that's a large company. And therefore, large companies usually pay in installments. Now, how are these installments paid? They are paid within a 12-month accounting period. You pay four quarterly installments. The first one is on the seventh month or rather, let me say the 14th day of the seventh month. The next one is the 14th day of the 10th month. The next one is the 14th day of the 13th month. And the next one is the 14th day of the 16th month. If you remember number seven, you just add plus three, plus three, plus three. Because seven plus three, 10. 10 plus three, 13. 13 plus three, 16. So per quarter, because it's a quarter installment. So you appreciate the fact that once you determine the first one, the seventh month of the 12th, 
your your 12 month period then you can be able to determine the rest remember it's the 14th day i remember 14th by thinking of valentine's so i'll really say valentine's 14th ah okay you know i'm not saying it's on february but at least 14th is a number that most people fall in love apparently <laughs> now and then we have here if augmented profits are less than profit threshold that's not a large company and therefore if you're not a large company your due date is usually nine months and one day after your year end so if your year end is on 31st of december nine months and one day from that will usually be first of october okay you count january february march april may june july august september and then one day <laughs> so we say one day so that you can start you know it can be at the beginning of a month primarily now let's look at a question here FPLC is a large company with a 31st March 2024 year end and an estimated corporation tax liability of 399,000 for the year. So this is a large company. They will pay um, primarily their payments, you know, uh, uh, they'll, do, they'll pay their payments in, in, qu in quarterly installments. Now, I want you to pause here and also try and attempt this question. Just stop. Stop. Try it out. Try to see, okay, that's the estimated corporation tax liability, you know, so how much will they pay if it's four installments? And when will they pay those four installments? So you tell me. Take your time, okay? Pause here as I continue. <laughs> now, the four equal installments, what I've done here is that I've taken 399,000 divided by four. I got 99,750. Now, if I look at my... My, my period, my accounting period, it runs from 1st of April 2023 to 31st of March 2024. So I have to identify the seventh month. So I'll see April is the first month. So we have May, June, July, August, September, October. So October is the seventh month for this period. And therefore, I'll take 14th, the 14th day of October. That will be when I'll make the first installment. Then after three months, I'll make the next one. Then after three months, I'll make the next one. Then after three months, I'll make the final one. Now, what if your accounting period is not 12 months? It's still a large company, but you, you realize that your accounting period is less than 12 months. How will the installments be normally be paid? Now, where corporation tax is payable by installments and the accounting period is less than 12 months, and the first installment is the lower of this formula, 3 over N. We take 3 because it's still in quarters, okay? So 3 would be a, a, a good way to remember, 3 months, okay? over n n is the number of months in the accounting period if it's eight months you'll do three over eight if it's nine three over nine and so on times the corporation tax um and also the total corporation tax for the accounting period whichever is lower okay so for large companies the due dates are as follows so this is what will happen the first installment is still due by the 14th day of the seventh month following the start of the accounting period. So again, seventh month, 14th day. I, I, you can't forget this. And then the subsequent installments are due every three months. Now, the last installment is usually due by the 14th day of the fourth month after the end of the accounting period, primarily so. So if your accounting period ends in March, then you will appreciate the fact that it will be the last instrument to be due by the 14th day of the fourth month after so if it's march i'm taking I'm looking at april may june july so 14th of july will be the last installment if your accounting period ended in march now um let's look at a question So BPLC has a 10-month accounting period to 31st of October 2023. As you can see here, the accounting period is less than 12 months. Because I'm teaching you on how short accounting periods works, we will assume this is a large company, okay? Now, if you look at this, the period ends on 31st of October. But since it's a 10-month period, it means it started off in January. Because if you have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So those are, it starts in January, ends in October. So the seventh month primarily would be January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So July will be the seventh month, but we'll t the first installment therefore will be 14th of January, of July. 
14th of July 2023. Then you'll do three months after that. So if July is the seventh month, then the 10th month will be the next payment because it will be after every three months. So you'll do 14th of October 2023. Then, you know, and we said that the last installment will normally be four months after the accounting period ends. So if, if, if the accounting period ends on that 1st of October, we know that the last installment will be four months after that, which will be November, December, January, February. So that will be February 14th, Valentine's. So when will the corporation tax be due if the total liability is expected to be 4 million? So this is how we compute it. Remember the installments are done by taking 3 over N. Okay, so 3 over 10 times 4 million. And you get 1.2. And we can see we usually take the law of 1.2 and the corporation tax liability. And in our case, that will be 1.2. So I'll take 1.2. I've already told you the dates. 14th of July, 14th of October, 14th of February, of January, because it's after every, after every, um, you know, three months. After every three months. Now, you realize by the third payment, you've made 3.6 million. True? So... The next payment will only be, remember, it's four months after the end of the accounting period, the last payment. And since you're paying a total of four million, you will appreciate that the remaining balance is 0 0.4. Now, you might ask yourself, is there another way of getting this 0 0.4? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. You see, the thing is that um, if you look at the period between 14th of January, the last the third payment, and the last payment, which is 14th of February, that's only one month. So you can actually do 1 over 10 times 4 million. Because you remember it was 3 over N times 4 million. Now, because you're not looking at 3 months, you're looking at 1 month, because it is between January and February, you can do 1 over 10 times 4 million. And that will give you 0 0.4. All right in that way so there are two ways of doing it you can also do it that way or you can also just do it by getting the balance okay now as we end the rules for individuals are similar to the ones for companies so they're similar for interest on late paid corporation tax so the percentages they are still the same the conditions are still the same even for repayment interest they're exactly the same um, standard penalties are exactly the same and th that's, that's, this, this rate, these three that I've mentioned here are given to you in the exam so you don't have to cram them. The HMRC powers, you know, discovery assessments, compliance checks, um, dishonest conduct for tax agents, uh, discovery assessments, you know, determinations, all those are similar. They are similar. All right. And that comes to the end of um, this particular area. I, I really, really, really hope that I've now simplified it. You've now really understood and seen that this, it was not as bad as you thought, right? So, um, and enjoy yourself. I wish you the very best with this area, even as you do more questions on self-assessment. Thank you.